is NTV. Welcome back and of course to the show. Now we transition to your world. Uh, if you're just joining us this morning, welcome to the show. My name is Winnie Lou Bembe. And of course today it's all about a very important conversation that honestly all of us should be talking about so that we don't see the impact of the same. And majority of the people who are affected is young people and especially young girls. All right. And we're talking about sexual, uh, you know, health sexual reproductive health <laughs> so, to, mix, uh, to mix the two and why it is important because again for a very long time we have had a lot of conversation um, you know as far as access to quality health services but majority of the times when you speak to the young people they'll tell you number one we do not have access and number two when we have access there's a lot of judgment you know um you know around the same that we're not able to get some of the services that we need so how important is it to provide first of all a safe environment for young people to go get access to some of the health services that they require and how much of an impact does that have on one's life that is the conversation we're having uh, this morning right here on your world and of course to help us with the same we have doreen mukami who's a sexual and reproductive health service provider good to see you this morning uh how are you doing you look lovely thank you Winnie. <laughs> you had to wake up pretty early huh yeah really early <laughs> no but it's good to see you um to the show but just in case someone um you know is, is coming across this time for the very first time and that is sexual uh, reproductive health what exactly does that encompass so sexual reproductive health uh, is a broad uh, aspect mm -hmm. in terms of sexuality and yeah. reproduction mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about uh, sexual health mm -hmm. it is the well-being of uh, the men and women being able to mm -hmm. exercise safe sexual practices yeah without being judged, mm -hmm. without being coerced, mm -hmm. discriminated, mm -hmm. or any aspect of violence mm -hmm. being in as part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about reproductive health, mm -hmm. it's the well-being of the reproductive system, sure. whether male or, or female. female. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about um, sexual health and uh, individuals having the right to uh, access these services mm -hmm. uh, there are key uh, areas that we need to address right. in terms of knowledge mm -hmm. are they aware of uh, what sexuality is yeah. uh, uh, are they able to access uh, the reproductive health services, services yes mm -hmm. are there uh, facilities mm -hmm. that have uh, a wide range of uh, these services being availed to the men and women mm -hmm. and are they able to have a right mm. of choice yeah. in regards to what they want uh, in their lives mm -hmm. in terms of reproduction mm. uh, especially when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, family planning yeah. or contraception mm -hmm. uh, are the people uh, able to choose mm -hmm. are the services available for them, for them. yeah 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 and mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're pointing out all this um, you know aspects so that you know people really get to understand and one of the things that I love that you've mentioned is about rights first of all do people even know their rights as far as access um, you know to to sexual reproductive health um, you know services first of all because like we all know again in the Constitution health that is like the basic human right. right. So it doesn't matter what services you are looking for. First of all, just understanding that this is your right for quality, affordable healthcare. That is just the baseline, um, you know, of all this information. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to imagine that you interact with, because um, really want to focus on the, on the young people. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that they need 
first of all, how aware are they of, you know, their rights to access some of these services? And, uh, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges? I know that is like three questions in one. Yeah, true. <laughs> but can we start with the level of uh, awareness um, as far as the young people uh, in terms of their rights um, to access some of these services? What, where, where are we at mm. from the interactions that you've had? So um, I would say in terms of awareness mm -hmm. for the young people, yeah. um, uh, the individuals who are in certain localities, mm -hmm. uh, like in the urban areas, yeah. are much more aware okay. because of uh, social media influence, mm -hmm. the level of education that they get. Mm -hmm. Most uh, people in urban areas are yeah. able to access mm -hmm. uh, basic education mm -hmm. all the way to secondary and tertiary. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when you look at uh, individuals in the marginalized communities where mm -hmm. even access to basic education mm -hmm. is is very hard mm -hmm. for them uh, when it comes to matters of uh, health mm -hmm. especially their reproductive health mm -hmm. it's it's somehow compromised. Yeah. Uh, even the cultural practices that mm -hmm. are there, yeah. there are some of the things that influence mm -hmm. the young people, especially the young girls, mm -hmm. to have a blind eye on mm -hmm. uh, what their rights are mm -hmm. and what they need to do mm -hmm. and what is um, expected of them in terms of mm -hmm. being able to complete their school first before mm -hmm. they get married. Mm -hmm. Then again, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, over time, mm -hmm. the issue of reproduction and the uh, young adults mm -hmm. have, uh, have turned around mm -hmm. because when we talk about teenage pregnancies, in 2014, issues, yeah. according to KDHS survey, mm -hmm. the pregnancy rate was at 18%. Yeah. But uh, the recent data released in 2022, mm -hmm. at least there was a 3% drop. Reduction, so the yeah. teenage pregnancies were at 15%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So um, I would attribute that to how uh, people took it up. Mm -hmm. They became vocal about yeah. the vice, especially during the time of COVID. Yeah. We saw so we many saw young girls issues. get pregnant True. and drop out of school. Mm -hmm. So it's a topic that was taken up. Uh, a lot of uh, mentorship and advocacy was done mm -hmm. and that could have contributed to the, to the, to drop. the drop. Yeah. So when it comes to awareness, mm -hmm. it's all about how we as the society are mm -hmm. able to take up and address it mm -hmm. so that we empower our young people mm -hmm to have uh, control over their health mm -hmm. so that they are able to access these services without mm -hmm. shying off. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically it's about well, being vocal yeah, and providing and the mentorship. Yeah. And, and you see majority of the times when, when you know you mentioned this topic, this taboo you know, related yeah. to the same. We talk about these things, okay, we used to, now we're doing slightly a little bit better, <laughs> but we still have a long way to go, yeah. where we talk about some of these things in hush, hush tones, right? Yeah. Um, in some communities, you're not even supposed to think about it, forget even mention, right? <laughs> Just thinking about it, it's a taboo in itself. Would you say this is one of the challenges that then, uh, you know, makes it a little bit difficult for us to even see um you know more reduction in terms of you know cases of for example teenage pregnancies um you know and you know these other vices that accompany the same yes mm -hmm. i would attribute uh to that mm -hmm. uh in our african setup yeah. uh especially in the earlier days, mm -hmm. our parents were not uh, free to discuss yeah. sexuality, yeah. sex with us. Yeah. Even the, saying the word sex oh, was, no. was like yeah. a taboo. Yeah. So, so some of those things are the ones that really contributed to mm -hmm. the society hiding mm -hmm. what happens in a, human's, uh, a woman's or a man's body as they grow up. Yeah. Uh, even having a male friend mm. back then was like a taboo. Yeah. You shouldn't have a boyfriend yeah. or a friend who is male. Mm, male. They shouldn't or touch vice you. Yeah, yes. so, so the aspect of how even to interact with each other as mm. we grow with the hormone changes, mm -hmm. it was something that was totally bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the things that people would do in the dark. Mm -hmm. 
you wouldn't open up to your parent to say that there's a, there's a boy who likes mm. you or yeah. something. Or winks at you. Or winks at you. <laughs> you cool. would really yeah. hide that so because it was shameful. Yeah, yeah. yeah even uh, developmental mm -hmm. milestones, mm -hmm. some girls would develop breasts earlier yeah. than others. True. And because these are things that were not taught in school, mm -hmm. at least nowadays I see that the curriculum has incorporated mm. sexual and reproductive health mm -hmm. as early enough so that people are able to understand what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are the things that we should turn around yeah. as a society so mm -hmm. that this information is readily available for these for young everybody. people. Yeah. Yes, so mm -hmm. that we can able to counter the consequences that mm -hmm. come with uh, yeah. unsafe practices. Absolutely. Because yes. then again, there's, there's, there's a whole... Like it's a ripple effect, right? Mm. There's the teenage pregnancy, there's early marriages. Yeah. Um, you know, in some communities, we're talking about cases of female, uh, you know, genital mutilation. It's a whole lot than yeah. just talking about, you know, sex yeah. um, in, in itself. Mm. And now we're seeing young people more informed. And I'm pretty sure you've had a lot of parents say, my child comes to me and says some stuff. And I'm like, first of all, where did you get this, this information? information? from right because the majority of the times they'll talk about it uh, amongst themselves there's a time we hosted a teacher here and she said some of the conversations that are happening in schools it's because this learners very young ones like at age eight yeah. age nine feel more comfortable to talk to their teachers as compared to yeah, their parents, parents right mm -hmm. and the things that they're saying um she gave an example and said one of the young girls came uh, and they're not talking with a friend because the friend quote unquote snatched the boyfriend you know so they know this thing yeah. so the big question for many parents is when do we start this conversations is it when you know um, at age 10 age 9 when when exactly do we start these conversations and how do we talk about these things in a way that they'll be able to understand and not just don't let anybody touch you and then that's it yeah so uh i would say that uh as parents mm -hmm. or upcoming parents, mm -hmm. parents who are already there, they already have teenagers, mm -hmm. it's never too late to start the talk. Okay. But the earlier the better. You can start even at age, age three. Right. As soon as they join yeah. kindergarten. Yeah. Because this is where now they will go and in start interacting with, with people. one another. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even the aspect of how to dress nicely, mm. how to be kept, mm -hmm. uh, why do girls have different mm -hmm. uh, toilets uh, from boys. boys? Yeah. Yeah. So those are the things that we should start early enough so mm -hmm. that we make it um, a safe environment for mm. these kids to express themselves mm. as they grow up. Okay. So if we shield it and say that I'll start talking to my girl or boy once they are teenagers, mm. then we would have missed a lot. Mm. And tell them don't get a boyfriend because you get a boyfriend, you get pregnant and then <laughs> you yeah. don't continue so, with the education. End of story. Yes. Okay. So All it's right. a topic that we should start as early, early as possible. You've okay. seen even uh, children get raped at home by the yeah. domestic care workers mm -hmm. or so even if, relatives or even the relatives mm -hmm. and these are very young young children mm -hmm. at the age of three two mm -hmm. so it's something that as parents we should start um, initiating the talk mm -hmm. so that these kids are aware mm -hmm. of what happens to themselves mm -hmm. it's not like uh, my uncle touched my susu no yeah. we should be able to not to misquote mm -hmm. let us call it if it's a vagina yeah. it's a vagina if it's okay. a penis it's a penis all right not um yeah branding this, this names <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so, yeah all right i mean what a short period we have to be cautious about what we say but i, I hear what you're saying i yeah. hear what you're saying that at the end of the day then this child needs to clearly know this is this and this is that yes. and if someone maybe touches me or even says mm -hmm. something um you know and then 
mentions the name the children need to know that this is wrong yeah. right because majority of the times people i mean and especially for the children they don't know so they will not even report Port, yeah. if something happens um to them mm. i like that um so then let's talk about some of the services that um you know some of this young people are actually seeking when they go to um, health services because like i said earlier on um i had an opportunity to speak to, to some young people you know a few months ago and majority of them were saying listen we can't even go there because number one there's a lot of stigma there's a lot of shame um you know someone asks you where we went from dogo ivy and you're coming for this services mm -hmm. so they'd rather not mm -hmm. all right and then use like dubious ways to get you know some of the uh, things that they need which again ends up being a problem for them so what are some of the services that should be provided um to the young people in the event that they seek them so first of all i would start by saying that uh all our health facilities mm. whether public or, or private, private. Yeah. should have uh, f youth friendly centers I or yeah. or designated areas mm -hmm. that offer youth friendly services okay. youth friendly means that it's a, a safe environment there where they can walk in without fear of being judged mm -hmm. So in this uh in these uh areas mm -hmm. where we are going to offer these services mm -hmm. we expect that they will have a wide range mm -hmm. of of services, services. and products yeah. that they can uh get uh information so mm -hmm. we would have uh, counselors who are there to offer information yes. because before you get any service you have to get the right information yeah. so we should have equipped centers with uh the right information and uh, uh, communication materials mm -hmm. that the youths can relate with. Okay. We should also have uh, providers uh, who are well trained mm -hmm. and versed with how to deal with young okay. young people. Right. So uh, I the age doesn't matter mm -hmm. because as long as you you're well trained and mm -hmm. know what the youths need, mm -hmm. you can be able to provide these services. And also services. communicate in a way that yes. you know you they don't feel you know the whole question Ju about judgment. And yes. I hear that. Okay. And then we should have the right services mm -hmm. all the way from contraception. Mm -hmm to safe uh, health education, mm -hmm. if there are any drugs that they need, mm -hmm. um, availability of screening services for Important. STIs, yes. because uh, one, some of the consequences of unsafe practices mm -hmm. is the STIs. Mm -hmm. They are not aware. They, are, they, do, they do not know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about uh, safe sex mm -hmm. they should uh, have that ability to access the information mm -hmm. and the protection services that the that condoms they require as well. yes yeah. and they should also be taught on how to use them mm -hmm. because when we shy away from talking about mm -hmm. uh, unsafe or unprotected sex mm -hmm. we are not helping them these people are already exposed and they're already yes. practicing it That's true. so it's upon us to take up now that next step of mm -hmm. uh countering mm -hmm. the negative effects yeah. that may come yeah. may come about all right yeah. um some time back and even now, really, um, some parents would, would there is a report, right, um, that, for example, a teacher, maybe in school, uh, reports to the parent and say, hey, so your child said this or your child did this, mm. right? Majority of the times you hear a lot of parents say, no, that's not my child. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> so most of the parents tend to bury their heads in the sand yeah. that these young people do not know these things. Um, you know, they, they are not aware. They are very innocent and all those things. But what you're saying is these young people have the information. Majority of the times, it's not the correct information. Yeah. So we need to make sure that number one, at home, we're having these conversations. And number two, even in the healthcare, um, you know, uh, facilities, if I can say, um, Someone is there to give them this correct information. But when you speak to these young people, what exactly are they saying? And as far as, like we said, information, yes, they have information, might not be right, might be right. Um, some of them know exactly what they need, but they're not given those uh, you know, particular services. What exactly are they saying? So um, my experience with the young people mm -hmm. is that when they come to our centers, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that they are sure of is mm -hmm. that uh, they are coming at a safe space. Okay. However, mm -hmm. they wouldn't want any elder person uh, from there. 
okay. from their home the to ones know that, that they more, came in for yeah. our services. Okay. So there is still that scare mm -hmm. that if my parent realizes I came here to mm -hmm. seek for contraception, mm -hmm. I, I might I might be even chased away from home. Okay. Yeah. So some of them, when they want to choose even a contraceptive method, mm. they would prefer one that is not even visible, one that, that their parent would not be aware they that they know. are using. Yeah. So it's something that they really need, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they don't get the support from, from, from their parents. Home. Okay. So when we are talking about youth-friendly services, mm -hmm. we would also want to have conversations with their parents. Mm -hmm. Even when we have talks, maybe in schools, when we have uh, uh, school health talks, mm -hmm. these are things that can be done even during Parents' Day, right? So that these parents yeah. can hear as we advise their, I hear their that. children. I hear that. They will be able to learn even from their facial expression in one hall <laughs> that their children yeah. are in need of this of services. these services. I hear that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember when we were in school, um, we used to be separated. So it's the girls on this side, and then the boys are totally taken to a different room, and then these conversations are held. So you don't know what they spoke about, and then they don't know what this girl spoke, spoke about. about. And you see, at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's no balance, right? Yeah, there's um, still a gap. There's yeah. still a gap over there. Yeah. Okay, but something else that we also need to be um, aware of is the whole question about consent. Um, because majority of the times, some of these young ones will come to the facility, they will be denied their services because there's no consent. So then at what point do you consider consent? And at what point, so it's sort of like a balance. You offer the service, but at the same time, what happens to consent and vice versa? I think we'll talk about that after the break. But if you have any other question as far as, you know, the sexual reproductive health is concerned, we're getting a lot of information, um, you know, in here today on the show. Uh, feel free to also send them our way at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter. Or if you want to call us live, feel free to do so. Our lines are open, but of course, we'll be looking at your feedback after the break. Stay with us. You got us 299 family dinners, 64 kisses on the cheek, 12 road trips to see grandma, 42 jokes from daddy, 49 laughs from mommy. In over 60 years of dealing with numbers, we've learned that the numbers that matter the most to you are the ones that matter the most to us. NCBA Bank. Go for it. God rewards faithfulness. And he's saying to Abraham, you have been faithful. You have walked the journey, you've saved the course. And I will show myself faithful on your behalf. When we pray, we say, God, we are trusting you for breakthrough. We are waiting on you for breakthrough. But do you know what? Sometimes it is God who is waiting on you. To get Hapana Tambua by Boss MOG, dial star 811 star 936 hash. Skiza Na Nation. Get ready to tantalize your taste buds and embark on a culinary journey with Pishi Bomba, the ultimate cooking show that brings the flavors of the world right into your living room. Tune in this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. with me, Claire Karatu, for a mouth-watering adventure. 
Mitsubishi Bomba in association with Coca-Cola. Make your mealtime more magical. Buy any participating pack. Check under the cap to get your code and stand a chance to win free food shopping for a year plus millions in instant cash, airtime and shopping vouchers. Welcome back, glad to stay with us. The show is your world, and of course, today it's all about sexual reproductive health. And we're saying it's important to have this conversation so that everybody knows, you know. And we're talking about from the parents to the young people, the society at large, so that we again avoid some of these cases. And as far as teenage pregnancies, we have early marriages, we have cases of female genital mutilation, amongst so many other things that affect the young people simply because number one, they might not be aware that there are services provided for them and number two they can access the services in an environment where they are not judged so then how do we get to that level of people getting the services that they require at the time that they require with no judgment we're having that conversation of course Doreen Mokami who's a sexual and reproductive health service provider here with us to answer all our questions and also let us know and especially for the parents who might be scared uh, you know for their children that listen it is okay for them to access the services at any level level um, that they require all right because according to UNFPA you know so many millions uh, of young people and this is around the globe not just in the country and of course the old scent of adolescence brings not only changes like we said to their bodies uh, but also new vulnerabilities to human rights abuses particularly in arenas of sexuality like we said marriage and as well as childbearing is concerned so Doreen before we went on a break of course there was a whole conversation around um, consent and there has been a bit of an issue you know push and pull where um, the young person needs the services but then again they're not able to get it because there's no consent from the parents so balancing the same let's just talk about the approach first of all what happens is it consider first of all the needs of this person or ask them with their consent <laughs> and their privacy as well yeah so uh, i would say even according to the constitution yeah uh, a woman of reproductive age okay. should have the right to choice. Okay. Uh, reproductive age mm -hmm. is any age between 15 and 45. And 45. All right. So if a minor who is 15 years mm -hmm. came in for a service, okay. regardless of whether they were accompanied by the parent or, or not, not. Mm -hmm. they have right okay yes to get the services that they require yes okay so the constitution mm -hmm. gives the woman the right okay we also have uh, adolescent, uh, adolescent sexual reproductive health policies that mm -hmm. are there to guide health providers mm -hmm. so they should uh, they should refer to these policies mm -hmm have the constitution with them mm -hmm. so that they are also covered they, mm -hmm. they shouldn't deny this uh, uh, young adults mm -hmm. the right to to choice they okay. should know that they are covered mm -hmm. and it's their right okay yes. um, and something else that we were talking about during the break is the whole question about many parents would assume that you're a minor number one so you might not be at that particular point be making the correct choice for you mm -hmm. because you think at the end of the day this is what i need and this is what i need now for example a case of uh, contraception right a lot of parents would panic and say if we allow them now then that means we're giving them sort of like room to go be promiscuous do whatever you want because you know at the back of your mind that you're quote unquote protected right so we could understand, yeah, we could <laughs> right? Understand. The panic from the parents. But at the end of the day, like you said, if it, someone needs the services, then they should be able to get it without being judged or denied their services. But then again, so, so then what do we do to the parents who are panicking and saying, listen, if I do this, then I give my child, uh, you know, a chance to go and be promiscuous. Yeah, it's, uh, 
the topic about parents it's quite hard some it's very of them difficult, yeah. are, are hard to come around yeah. but it's a conversation that will still keep mm -hmm. on talking and talking you've seen things that we thought uh we were so rigid with some things yeah. as africans but with time yeah. we have loosened up mm -hmm. and accepted some yeah. practices mm -hmm. so it will it will it will take time yeah. but we will get we'll there. get there yes. i like the optimism i like the optimism and something else that the, again we we're discussing is um who do you see mostly um is it the girls or is it the boys the girls the girls yes. and it's so interesting because majority of the times when we talk about sexual reproductive health we usually gravitate towards the girls yeah. does this sort of like concern you uh, in terms of then what happens to the boys <laughs> and the services and the information that they get uh, it's uh, it's a matter of concern yeah uh, it's something that has been there mm -hmm. even for for older people yeah we see the the people will come in for these services mm -hmm. majority are women okay. when you talk about contraception men are really shying away yeah. from yeah. contraception but they are also coming along mm -hmm. we've seen majority uh show up for mm -hmm. services like in maristops kenya we had a mm -hmm. campaign for vasectomy mm -hmm. in november and they showed up in yeah. large numbers okay. that means men have already started taking up that role yeah. of also mm -hmm. uh, family planning okay. and uh, planning the families mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to earlier on when women their role the, the role of planning was left, left solely the, for women. for women yeah. uh, so even with our young people because mm -hmm. they are the future mm -hmm. parents sure. the future leaders mm -hmm. we should um, tune in, tune them in as mm -hmm. early as possible mm -hmm. and that's why we have these talks Mm -hmm. with them as early enough we have mentorship programs for young people yeah so that also the 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 boys the mm -hmm. male gender can mm -hmm. know that they also are welcome and mm -hmm. they also have a role to play when yeah. it comes to reproduction absolutely yes. i mean listen the whole conversation especially for, for for vasectomy there's still a lot of stigma surrounding the same and i'm just curious um is stigma one of the biggest hurdles or biggest challenges that um you know the men would face um that sort of like denies them access to some of these services because there's a time we also had a show right here on your world and we talked about stigma not stigma but um you know vasectomy yeah. and you not just vasectomy in itself but just the men taking you know responsibility as far as you know family planning is concerned and there was a lot of uh comments and and, and people saying no that is purely a woman role you know as far as that is concerned so would you say stigma is one of the biggest hurdles uh, that denies men uh, services? I would see is there uh, would I say male chauvinism yeah or, yeah or yeah okay or, or maybe the, the way the society or the way the society yeah. views mm -hmm. or the misquoting that vasectomy is equivalent to castration yeah they are afraid that once it's done they will lose their ability to become men mm -hmm. so that is the biggest uh, challenge yeah. there so it's uh, a lot of education that mm -hmm. needs to be uh put out there mm -hmm. and let the and even those who have already undergone vasectomy to come out mm -hmm. as champions and yes. ambassadors of yeah. it's it works it mm -hmm. doesn't affect your sexual life mm -hmm. yeah so it's something that but i can see that men are really trying to embrace it mm -hmm. one will come in mm -hmm. at mary stops mm -hmm. and book for a vasectomy mm, case and okay. they are done and they go home well yeah. they come back three months later they are okay mm -hmm. when you interview them they say that their sexual life is okay mm -hmm. as opposed to having the woman mm -hmm. getting the total burden of getting the family plan yeah. raising the kids mm -hmm. being the it's like the woman is everything yeah. in that home yeah. so some of these men have become quite considerate mm -hmm. and uh they are making it easier for their women. And it's a good thing to, to, to hear some of them actually say, listen, um, number one, we understand the sort of like impact um, contraception can have, and especially on a woman's body. So we've had a lot of men, some men um, who come and say, listen, I decided to take that burden off of her because there's a lot of things that happen, the hormones, you know, the changes, and it's just too much for, for, for one person. Um, 
to bear, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. So then looking at where we are now as a country in terms mm -hmm. of access to information, access to the services, what are some of the gaps that maybe you have identified, um, you know, as, as a provider that needs to be strengthened to make it easier for everybody to access some of the services that are required? Um, one of the greatest gap is um, safe uh, mm. when it comes to the environment ah. where they are being offered okay. the safe space. Okay. So most of these uh, people who seek our services, mm -hmm. especially the young people, mm -hmm they have a notion of being judged that okay. is one of That's the greatest of the biggest, gaps uh, that okay. is in these uh, in these facilities of ours mm -hmm. uh, but as marie stops mm -hmm. we have um, a public strengthening system. Mm -hmm. uh, we providers, we also mentor the public health providers, mm -hmm. those who are based in public health facilities, mm -hmm. so that they are able to offer friendly services mm -hmm. to, to people. Mm -hmm. uh, the other gap is the quality of services. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you hear someone got a, a service somewhere, maybe a contraceptive, and they ended up mm. with serious complications that are of what the manufacturer states are mm. expected side effects. Okay. Maybe you got an infection mm. in the site yeah. because of how the, the service was offered. Mm -hmm. So also these are... Uh, uh, public strengthening uh, system from our side mm -hmm. as Marie Stops mm -hmm. is also trying to get to the public facilities, they give them the training mm -hmm. that they require yeah. and they assess them on how they're able to offer those services. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I would say it's uh, availability of information. Okay. The information has to be available, not mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. at the health facility, mm -hmm. it has to be available in schools. All right. Uh, we have to offer these, uh, this information that is appropriate mm -hmm. to the specific age groups mm -hmm. and uh, we need to, to have platforms. Mm -hmm that can gather these people and have them get the information. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about seminars, even the churches that hold seminars yeah. for youths, mm -hmm. it should it should not solely be about the Bible. Mm -hmm. We should also talk about other aspects of life, mm -hmm. sexuality, because sexuality is something that can make even one deviate from their faith. That's true. So That's true. When, yeah. when we get uh, these forums and seminars, mm -hmm. we should be able to have the right information mm -hmm. give them an unfiltered information because okay. when we filter information mm -hmm. we leave them uh, uh, with the question of then what mm. what happens after that okay. so you should be able to give complete information okay yeah. all right um do not leave chance for experimentation and see yeah. so they said <laughs> <laughs> and i think it's it's human it's common and especially amongst the young people you tell them no they want to understand why are you telling me no right mm -hmm. so the go experiment and most of the time you know the consequences it's difficult for most of them um to bear so correct information but also complete yeah. um information yes. i like that i like that aspect um but at the same time as, as a country we've dealt with cases um of shortages right there's a time there's a huge cry shortage of condoms um which is, is something that people need, but at the end of the day, we do not have them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so how much of a risk are some of these, you know, shortages to people and most of, most especially what we're talking about today, the young people, how much of a risk um, is this to them? And what are some of these risks that, um, you know, they're also faced with? So when we talk about shortages of products, mm -hmm. of course, when there are no products, yeah. that service will not be available uh, to be used, utilized by people. Mm -hmm. So it poses a risk, mm -hmm. especially when we talk about safe sex, mm -hmm. uh, protected sex. Mm -hmm. So people are not able to practice safe sex and they are exposed to unwanted pregnancies. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be exposed to sexually transmitted infections. infections yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are the greatest risks that are posed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about uh, uh, sexuality, mm -hmm. It doesn't uh, mean understanding only the reproductive system. Mm -hmm. It means that whatever 
that we need mm -hmm. for our reproductive system mm -hmm. to be at par with us. Mm -hmm. For us to be able to be protected against consequences of having a reproductive mm -hmm. uh, system, mm -hmm. we need to have the products readily available and mm -hmm. adequate. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's not always the case. It's not always the case, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, that's why we have non-governmental organizations, mm -hmm. private uh, hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, at Maristops, we have very affordable services. We mm -hmm. have our own brand of condoms, the mm -hmm. Lifeguard. Mm -hmm. uh, very affordable mm -hmm. and in adequacy. Mm -hmm. It has been disseminated in most chemists and uh, pharmacies. Mm -hmm. So uh, we shouldn't solely rely on the free products mm -hmm. from the government. Yeah. We, we have alternat cheap alternatives okay. and of, uh, of good quality that yeah. can serve. The I mean, I know for quality has been quality has one of the, been one of the the biggest issues that people yeah. you know have mm. had to deal with for for, for a while. Yeah. Uh, and of course, in the country again, like we're saying, um, th this conversation about condoms that were not of good quality, which poses even greater risks, um, you know, to 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 the public. So yeah. it's important to also factor in, yeah. um, you know, this Quality. whole yeah the whole aspect of making sure that they are available, but also of um, of good quality. quality yeah. I hear that. Mm. All right. So then, in terms of strengthening the services, right? Um, and like we said, we need to have uh, trained um, healthcare providers who are able to not only disseminate information but also offer services that um, you know are required by the young people. Um, in terms of then ensuring that they are there. They have the correct information they are empowered because that is one of the things that we're also dealing with and especially when it comes to the health sector and that is they're not strengthened or they're not enough the human resource um, you know aspect of the same can we talk a little bit about um about that the human resource aspect of you know sexual uh, reproductive health yeah mm -hmm. human resource uh I would say it's a great challenge yeah. uh, for most uh, facilities. facilities yeah. mm -hmm. We've seen people uh, in search of greener pastures. They have most yeah. healthcare workers are going to the UK, the mm. USA because of greener pastures. True. Where does that leave us? Mm -hmm. It leave, uh, leaves us with a shortage of qualified mm -hmm. personnel to yeah. offer these services. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the government mm -hmm. to look at it yeah. as a serious issue really because is, yeah. in the near future you will you will have almost all the nurses mm -hmm. the laboratory mm -hmm. technicians the clinical officers they will have gone mm -hmm. in search of greener pastures mm -hmm. and then we'll be left with people who are not able to to offer, offer the services, the services. Yeah. so it's a uh, it's an issue that gave the government should take up if it in terms of remuneration mm -hmm. they should look at it what they should do to retain their mm -hmm. their personnel mm -hmm. Because uh, Kenyans are bright. Mm -hmm. When they go out there, they shine. That's true. So it's, yeah. if the government retained them, we would be at a better place. Mm -hmm. Because uh, healthcare is not about having the hospitals yeah. alone, building so many people. hospitals. We yeah. need people and the right people with the right attitude, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. for the job. All right. Yeah. Um, and, and moving the conversation from just having the services, making sure that it's accessible, making sure that it is affordable. Talking about it on a larger scale, in terms of the impact that it can have, when we have the correct information, we have access, um, we have availability of the products, we have the human resource, <laughs> and, and, and and like we said, quality, um, you know, is, is, is one of the biggest things that, that we really need to be, to be um, that should be of importance, right? On a larger scale, the impact that this can have in, first of all, a family, a community, and then... Um, you know, taking that to, to a larger scale, and this is as far as the country is concerned. How much of an impact are we talking about? And case in point, just first of all, teenage pregnancy, for example, right? How much of an inf impact will that have if we had all those things in place? I would assure you, if all that was in place, yeah. well, people had the cases. right to, yeah. to choice and everything. Yeah. Teenage pregnancies would be a matter of the past. Mm -hmm. We would be at zero yeah. percent. Uh, when we talk about education, all uh, young girls will have the, the access to education all the way to tertiary level. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. We'll have uh, they will be better placed mm -hmm. in the economy to get better jobs. Mm -hmm. It means 
more income for their families. That's true. Yeah. And it will also translate mm -hmm. to the growth of the economy. Mm -hmm. So it's something that would really have a whole mm -hmm. effect yeah. as a country yeah. and even for better growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then talking about community empowerment, because again, like we said, mm -hmm. um, in the urban areas, yes, we see a lot of um, you know young people have the correct information um, at the end of the day. But then again, in communities where number one, there's no information uh, and all those things. So then where do we start? as a people because we need to get to that level yes we have seen a reduction in teenage pregnancies um, but at the same time we need to get to zero percent will we get there let's say yes, yes. all right that will <laughs> let's take be time. optimistic yeah. but it will take some bit of time so what will it take let's just start from the household level right what will it take for us to get to the zero percent as far as the case of teenage pregnancies, you know, we talked about sexually transmitted infections, early marriages, female genital mutilation, amongst so many other vices. Yeah. So uh, it will take a lot to address the cultural practices. Yeah. So once we are able to address that, mm -hmm. then we are able to turn around yeah. the community. Yeah. Because these cultural practices like early marriages mm -hmm. are the ones that are derailing the the young people mm -hmm. behind okay. in those marginalized communities mm -hmm. yeah then again poverty levels yeah. poverty the is the issues. greatest derailment mm -hmm. with poverty you will not have access to education mm -hmm. without access to education if you just get the basic edu even merely the basic education yeah. what next you think mm -hmm. about marriage yeah. some of them get married mm -hmm. so that they can earn cows for the family That's cow true. is a source of wealth yeah. so these cultural practices are the ones that have made uh, communities that are marginalized to have higher numbers in mm. terms of teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to address this, and I believe we have leaders from those really communities, yeah. like the issue of FGM, mm -hmm. it's something that was fought for quite some time, yeah. but at this point in time, there are only very few people are practicing it. That's true. So it means in the near future, we'll also have 0%. Mm -hmm. So it all starts from the grassroots, mm -hmm. addressing the root cause, mm -hmm. which is the culture. Yeah. Sometimes holding on to culture is mm -hmm. ha, does more harm than good, than good yeah. yeah so it talks that needs to be done not mm -hmm. only by the health providers mm -hmm. even the political scene has to come in come in yeah yes. puts puts um, you know like a collective effort yes. in terms of, of fighting those things and one of the things that we also have seen as far as culture is concerned um is the whole question of our great 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 grandparents used to practice this yeah. we are practicing it we've not you know so so holding on strongly to to the culture is, is one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. the question is the approach how do we approach this so that we feel we're not um stepping on to some people's culture but promoting progressive you know um culture what would you say that the approach should should be from a provider's <laughs> perspective so yeah. that we limit uh, you know some of these uh, cases that bring us trouble uh, so when we talk about the community, providing health at the community level, mm -hmm. you have to involve the administrative mm -hmm. uh, areas. Right. Uh, when we, talk, we have the chiefs, mm -hmm. the assistant chiefs, mm -hmm. the Nyumbakumi's yes. initiatives. Yeah. So those are the people that we should bring closer to us mm -hmm. so that we get to understand the community better mm -hmm. before we do an entry yeah so it's like we are making an assessment first mm -hmm. through these key people okay. within the community mm -hmm. and i believe for one to be a chief yeah. in a community they have attained a certain level of education and influence as well. and influence yes. as well yeah so the use of these administrative people within the communities mm -hmm. is one of the best ways mm -hmm. to have a penetration into the community mm -hmm. they'll also give you data mm -hmm. they'll tell you what the community values most yeah. and what the community is willing to forego at that time yeah. so that way you are now able to mm -hmm. uh, 
prepare yourself on how you will handle the mm -hmm. community yeah. then you start a step by step it's yeah. not something that can be done all yeah. at a go yeah. but you do it in faces yeah yes. and don't expect to 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 see the results here Instantly. and now yes yeah. take take some bits some bit of time yeah. and also in a language again that they are able to understand right mm -hmm. and not like language like speak their language yes speak their language but also you know come down to their level depending on where they are right yeah. as far yeah. as culture um, is concerned yeah. which is a good thing but at the same time um, Asking this very cautiously, and <laughs> this is as far as like prosecutions, um, you know, are concerned, right? It's yeah. important to also think about that so that people know the consequence of, right, um, of one thing or the other. For example, denying someone, you know, access to education, education right? Denying someone access to, you know, the health services. Again, so what measures do you feel as a provider needs to be put in place, if this is by the government or responsible institutions, just to make sure that there is no denial of access just because? So it's punishable by the law yes. to deny someone their rights. Mm -hmm. We have seen communities where chiefs take it mm -hmm. in their hands. Yeah. When schools are opening, mm -hmm. if they come to your home and find mm -hmm. that Anyone who is aged five years and above is not in school. Mm -hmm. As a parent, you're taken by the chief. Yeah. You will be executed for not mm -hmm. uh, taking the kids mm -hmm. to school because mm -hmm. basic education has been free for quite some time. So yes. you cannot say that you don't you have do the money to, yes. to facilitate for that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, coming up with different ways of punishing. Mm -hmm parents or communities that deny certain rights to, to the yeah, young people. To the people. Yes. I see that. Mm -hmm. All right. So then as we bring this to a close, like we said, first of all, just health at the very basic level. This is a fundamental right to everybody, right? We talked about access. We talked about um, information, which is very important. Choice. Talked about choice, choice which is yeah. also uh, you know something that we also need to think about. But at the same time, facilities that are well equipped, uh, and the healthcare providers also empowered really yeah. to offer their services. So where do you see this going? And, and, and to what level would you say we'll get to the level of 0% in terms of teenage pregnancies, um, you know, people have access to the services that they require. How long do you see this, uh, you know, going? You say like 2025 maybe we'll have <laughs> no <laughs> uh, 2025 could be too soon okay um let's say in the next five to seven in the next years, five to seven years yes, we'll notice some bit of change with the right mechanism mm -hmm. and with people who are vocal okay yeah if we address something and then we just keep quiet about it mm -hmm. then it just goes down oh yeah we make noise for a few days this and then then we keep completely quiet. forget so yeah. it's something that we need to keep on talking about mm -hmm. and then being the advocates of that young person person mm -hmm. in the village yeah. if you are empowered from your community mm -hmm. be the advocate for that person That's so true. that when you see their rights are being infringed mm -hmm. you are able to, You're able to intercept to. Yeah. yeah i like that all right so mm -hmm. speak to someone who's watching us this morning um you know at home and thinking okay access to sexual reproductive health <laughs> and all those things very quickly in like 30 seconds how important this is to everybody really doesn't matter whether you're young or old um, I would like to encourage any young person mm -hmm. there that uh, we as Maristops Kenya, mm -hmm. the Blue Door, we are mm -hmm. always open. Mm -hmm. We provide a safe space. Okay. If you need any inquiries, you have questions that you would want us to address, mm -hmm. 